Hello everyone and welcome to the long-awaited second video of the Reversing for Newbie series. And today we're going to be tackling another Reverse Me, um, but we're going to take a little bit of a different approach in terms of um, getting past the walls in the program um, that let us know that our evaluation period is out of date. Instead of going through and modifying the flags of the jumps throughout the program, we're going to actually incorporate the use of a, a key file um, in, in the place of simply modifying the jumps. So without further ado, I know you guys have been waiting for this for a very long time, and I, I just want to say thank you guys for the amazing feedback on the first video. I'm glad to see that there are a lot of people taking advantage um, of these videos I'm putting out and that just gives me motivation to keep them going so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the second part of reversing for newbies uh, one important announcement that I would like to make is I no longer use Ollie debug just because you know it's it's not as up-to-date as it could be you know Ollie debug is an open source um, so there's not really continuous updates as far as different features and stuff and that's where x64 debug comes in you know it's open source it has a whole community dedicated to developing the program itself so it's just a way better option um, in terms of a disassembler so I'm gonna go ahead and open up x32 debug um, make sure you use the 32-bit version um, for this specific file. Um, if you try to open it in X64 debug itself, it'll actually um, show you an error message that says you need to use a 32-bit version. So I'll show you um, what happens when you try to um, open it with X64. If you look at the bottom, it says use X32 uh, debug to debug this file. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and open up that reverse me um, and again the download link for this will be in the description of course just like the last video and um, if you guys don't have uh, an annotated comment section like this one um, I actually just put up a tutorial that shows you how to install um, the plugin that actually does this It's called X analyzer um, the video should be up on the screen uh, you can go ahead and check that out just so you get a better idea of program function. So let's let's look at what we're working with here. So if you guys remember previously, um, you see at the beginning of the program, we have you know the standard stuff being loaded. You know we got our our load icon, um, our load cursor. You know pretty much just the the important stuff that that makes a program a program like a like a window you know so if we step down um, we'll see the first Windows API function that we have called is create file a so if we go ahead and uh, let's let's look at the documentation for this specific Windows API function it's always a good habit to make sure that you you know exactly what's happening within these functions so you see that the create file a function creates or opens a file or an input output device all right that's pretty straightforward so if you take a look at the arguments that are being passed into this specific Windows API function you can see that um, the file name we're looking for which is the first argument is uh, key file dot dat one important note I'd like to point out is that um, when we're looking at the syntax of a specific function you can see that file name kind of comes first and then everything follows well in assembly um, these are being uh, pushed onto the stack so the order reverses as a result of that so it's just like flipped upside down so key file dot dat um, would correspond to the file name which is the first parameter of that specific function so just be aware of that um, you know nothing too nothing too complicated just a I guess a minor inconvenience <laughs> so we can see that we're trying to open a file that is called key file dot dat and so that's the first uh, functionality of the program and if we actually go back to the directory where our reverse me is located you can see that there's no key file in this directory that create file a is basically saying okay in my current directory which is where the directory where this reverse me is at 
is there a file that I can access that's called keyfile.dat? And if that file actually ends up being found, um, it's going to go ahead and modify the EAX register. So just so you know, every Windows API function will always modify the EAX register. So when you see something like um, like a create file call, you will always see that followed by a compare EAX. Um, same thing for this read file down here. You can see that you know we're, we're looking at EAX with that as well. So just keep in mind that Windows API functions always will modify that EAX register. So if that file is found, um, this create file A is going to make sure that that EAX register has an actual value. So if we so if we step down to that specific um, compare, you can see that afterwards if it's not equal then what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump past this error message however if EAX is equal to negative one which is what these eight F's represent then we're gonna go ahead and just step straight down into this error message so if I so if I go ahead and run that through you can see that since there wasn't a file found our EAX was set to negative one and that corresponds to the comparison which makes that compare equal which which, like I just said previously, pushes us down into that error message. And if I keep, you know, stepping down, you see that we get that error message. All right. So first things first, let's just create, let's create that. Let's give it the key file it's looking for. So just create a new uh, text document. And then I will go in here and save this as key file dot dat. Save that as all files. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that and delete that. And so now if we step down to where this create file is called, you can see that this comparison now isn't equal to zero. You know, we have a different value or not zero, negative one. So since that's not equal to negative one anymore, what we're going to do is this jump is now going to be taken. As you can see, we're jumping straight over the error message, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So creating that key file in that directory is actually working in our favor so far. All right, now that the create file A is successfully recognizing the fact that we do have um, the file that it's looking for in our directory, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what happens next. So as you can see, right after we jump out of that um, file access check, um, we start pushing values for the read file Windows API function onto the stack. And so let's take a look at our documentation just to see exactly what we're looking at. Um, so obviously the read file function reads data from the specified file or input output device. That's pretty straightforward. Um, you can kind of discern what the function does simply just based off the name. So our first argument H file we we don't have a value for so that's fine we won't worry about that our second uh, value is an LP buffer and that's set to 40211A and if we scroll down we can actually see what the LP buffer does so the LP buffer is a pointer to the buffer that receives data read from a file or device this buffer must remain valid for the duration of the read operation and the caller must not use this buffer until the read operation is completed Gotcha. Next thing we're looking at is the number of bytes to be read. So that's set to 46, which is obviously in hex, which corresponds to 70 in the decimal system. So that's basically the amount of things that need to be read in that file. The next value is, um, which is this 402173, is going to correspond to the number of bytes that have been read so um, the number of bytes that need to be read is 46 and then the number of bytes that have been read um, is going to be stored in a memory location in this case 402173 you can kind of think of it as a progress bar um, so the value of the progress bar at maximum you know, maximum, I guess, progress, like a full progress bar is 46. And everything from the beginning to the end of that progress bar value wise is going to be stored 
in the 402173, which is the number of bytes that have been read. Sort of, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure if that was a good analogy or not. In my head, it sort of made sense. Um, you know, if you guys have a problem with that analogy, just leave a comment. I'll, I'll be happy to clarify it in the comment section below. But uh, let, let's keep going. Let's keep stepping through this program. So, uh, read file is called. Um, you can see that um, it was successful in its initialization because our EAX was set to 1. So we're going to go ahead and keep stepping through the program. You can see that we're going to go ahead and jump over another jump. So let's see where this where this other jump takes us. Uh, if we scroll down, okay, we can see that we get jumped into another error message. So basically, due to the fact that our read file was successful, we're going to go ahead and skip over that bad jump, which is good. That's what we want. So boom, jump over that. And the next thing that happens is our EBX and ESI registered registers both get zeroed out and so the reason this happens is because um, it looks like we are setting up for a loop so if I just keep stepping down we can see that both EBX and now ESI were zeroed out so the next thing that happens is we have a compare so we're comparing the hexadecimal value of 10, which corresponds to uh, the number 16. We're comparing that against the value um, of the memory address 402173. Now, if you're wondering what that is, that's actually a uh, memory value that we um, established in our read file so if we if we go back to our documentation you can see that um, you can see that the fourth argument is the number of bytes read okay so we're comparing 16 with the value of the number of bytes that have been read so if so the jump preceding it is the jump of less than so if the value stored at this memory address is less than 16, which it currently is, we're going to jump to the bad error message. And if we if we go down to it, you can see that that jump is actually being being taken so far. If you go to the compare, you can see that the current value stored at that memory location is zero. So obviously that jump is going to get taken. And if we keep going down get that error message and that's not what we want whoops meant to hit restart so let's go from the top let's go ahead and go back to the basics and we're gonna go ahead and simply jump over that um, by modifying the flag so um, here on the right you can see that jump if less than is going to be looking at the s flag in order for for it to work or not so we're gonna go ahead and change that to zero and what that allows us to do is make the program think that there are at least 16 bytes in that file next thing that happens is we have um, some some movement going on so we're moving the value of EBX plus 40211A into the 8-bit register AL if you remember earlier this 40211A is actually the the buffer that we're using in order to read um, each individual byte in our uh, in our key file. So, and then this EBX that's EBX plus that's going to be offset. So what's going to happen is um, that buffer will move. Um, according to this EBX and and we'll elaborate more on that here in a little bit so okay so let's move down we see that we have a comparison currently going on um, and if you go back to the to the move we're gonna compare whether or not uh, the 8-bit register AL contains the value 0 and if it does which which it currently does 
then we're going to jump to a compare. So let's see what happens when we jump to that compare. So we compare if ESI is greater than or equal to the value of 8. If we take a look here on the right, we can see that ESI is currently 0. Or if we look down here as well, ESI is currently set to 0. So due to that, if we step down into this next jump, which is a jump if less than, which is currently true, then we get jumped into the error message again. And if we keep going down, you see that we got that error message. So let's go ahead and get back down to where we were. Remember that we got to change the, Z, the uh, S flag of this one so we so we proceed down normally. We got to make the program think that we have at least 16 bytes in the file. OK, so we so we move um, the value that that buffer is looking at into the 8 bit register. Run that comparison. And so we want to bypass this jump. And so the jump if equal to flag is going to be looking at the Z flag. So we're going to go ahead and set that to zero so we don't take that jump. If we step down, we see that, OK, we're comparing the value, the hexadecimal value 47 to um, the value in the 8-bit register. You can see here that the hexadecimal value 47 actually corresponds to the letter G. So what what's happening is it's looking at um, what the buffer is currently looking at, right? And so if the buffer, which is stored at this AL, is, is looking at G, then then that would be that would be all good. And then we would not take this jump. But as you can see, if we click back on that compare, the a bit register is currently set to zero so so they're not equal and due to the fact that they're not equal we skip over this uh, increment ESI which is crucial because remember earlier that in order for us to get out of this loop successfully and get the message that we want ESI needs to be greater than or equal to 8 so what we need to do is we need to make sure that um and that we're incrementing that and that program functionality actually helps us um determine what should be going into this key file so we need we need the value g at least eight times but also remember that the total number of bytes has to be at least 16. so and that that pretty much tells us what all we need in our key file dat file. So if we go back and we go into our file that we created um, earlier, we're going to put in G eight times. And then we're going to make sure that the total number of bytes in the actual file is at least 16. So I'll just put in a bunch of zeros. Right. I'm going to save that. OK, I guess I got to uh, stop this real quick so I can save that. All right. Then I'm going to restart. And then we're going to see what happens while we step through this program now. OK. All right. Cool, we're not taking that jump. So let's see, it's looping through all the characters. You can see that every time we go through this loop, ESI is incrementing because every time it's finding that letter G. ESI is now six, now it's seven, now it's eight. And so the next time we run into that, into this comparison, we're gonna skip over this less than jump and we're gonna go straight to the next jump that precedes it which takes us to the good message so let's let's keep running through that and here we go we have ESI eight times 
now we're just verifying that we have you can see that um, our buffer is going through all the values in that file so if I actually just hit um, run you can see that we get you really did it congrats and so that's pretty much the tutorial um, biggest part was just determining what the program was looking for in terms of what a valid key was and we did that successfully by looking exactly at what values um, the loop was looking for um, how many times that loop was looking for those values um, how big the file had to be and based on all that we were able to generate a valid key file in order to get us to the end of the program and establish the message that we wanted thank you guys for watching the second video and again I'm sorry it took so long to come out you know uh, I, I've been working my butt off putting in hours over summer break um, I will definitely try and make sure that the third video gets out in a more timely fashion um, you know I'll probably just jump right into that after I finish making the introduction to assembly video which will cover more basic concepts you know what each register is used for the different 8-bit registers um, you know the different mnemonics that are in assembly like push compare add stuff like that so definitely stay tuned if you're a beginner to assembly for that video make sure you like and subscribe if this video helped you out and make sure you subscribe just so you get a notification when that introductory video comes out and uh, thank you guys very much for watching